next speaker is concurrently the founder and chairman of the board of COL Financial since 1999, COL Securities Hong Kong Limited since 2001, City, Secur City Securities Inc. since 1986, and Kalum Trading Institute since 2013. He served as a nominee of City Securities Inc. to the Manila Stock Exchange and presently to the Philippine Stock Exchange. He was also elected as one of the governors of the Philippine Stock Exchange and was the chairman of the Computerization Committee of the Manila Stock Exchange and PSE in 1994. He went on to become a member of the board of directors of the A. Soriano Corporation, serving for two terms. He was also nominated as a finalist to the 2007 Entrepreneur of the Year Philippines by Ernst & Young. In 2015, he was awarded with the Theodore, Theodore Vail Most Outstanding JA Alumni Awardee. Lastly, in 2016, he was appointed as an official board member of Junior Achievement Asia Pacific. Let's give a warm Trader Summit welcome to the man who needs no further introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, our very own founder and chairman, Mr. Mr. Edward, Edward Lee. Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. Uh, last year, I was, uh, I think I was explaining it in Davao. Davao. In fact, uh, our Davao managing partner is here, uh, Janet Rodriguez. Please give her a Round of applause. <clears throat> we did a workshop. And uh, this is now posted also on YouTube. Please uh, take a look at it. They were able, Ed, Ed and his group was able to slice it up and put it into 12 different uh, YouTube uh, segments. Okay, so what I will try to do today, I think I was <laughs> joking with uh, Dino and said that we're going to show you everything that we've done for, I've done for the last 46 years. Next year, what are we going to do? We don't have to teach you. Anyway, uh, let me just show you my journey. And uh, I will have a disclaimer here. Because uh, in 2005, when we decided to educate the, the masses, we were basically, we are market timers. I've been a market timer for so many years. Then the problem is that, I think I shared this story, is that by 9, 2007, 2008, we, when we saw the market coming down and we were warning people to get out, most of them did not until the 2008 deleveraging came. And uh, then we changed the business model. The business model became a long-term investment, easy investment program that was launched, I think, somewhere in October 2008. But when we did that, that was the beginning of COL Financial. Call Financial was born, basically, with the intention of helping people, the masses, learn how to have that financial literacy mindset and being able to have an investment program that when they retire 10, 20 years from today, they will all be financially free. So the disclaimer is here is that because sometimes, sometimes my actions, my action is not really long-term investing. It is a lot of market timing. Okay, so let me share with you, this is my whole journey. I started as an investor. I was exposed to the stock market when I was a JA uh, mini company president. And one of the mentors was, came from London School of Economics. And I visited his office at the back. There were so many charts. And I didn't understand what it is. I was 17 years old. And I asked, what's all this? And he said, these are stock charts of companies. And at the time, you remember, way back in the 70s, everything is all about oil and gas. Everything is all about speculative mining issues. So if, you, if I continue to show... The, the journey, you would see that most of my investment, not investment, but most of my speculative uh, ventures are all mining companies, what we call informed speculation. So look at this journey. 
I started as an investor, but of course, I was so young, I became a speculator. During that stint from 1973 to 1983, I was spending most of my time learning how to time markets. Timing markets is not difficult. It's just that sometimes you begin to doubt whether it's right or wrong because timing is all about probability. 50, 60% of the time you're wrong. But what is really important is that when you're wrong, you minimize your losses. And the 30, 40%, when you do well, you will outperform the market. So if you follow the rules of technical analysis, you need to put some stops. And that's what protected me from getting wiped out. But those were the initial years when I was still very small. In terms of my account, it's really small, so it doesn't really matter. But today, a lot of things happen, right? So from an investor, I became a speculator. Learning how to speculate. In fact, I spent a lot of my time with uh, Juanes' father. Juanes was inherited because his father was basically the knows the book Technical Analysis of Stock Trends, which is the Bible of technical analysis by Edwards and McGee. I spent time and time learning from him. So by the time Juan has graduated, the father asked me, can you hire Juan? I said, of course, because his father is really, he knows Edwards and McGee like, like a Bible. He knows each and every page of what's happening there. So classic starting is a study of human behavior, and that is the basis for technical analysis. So as you become, as I become, was able to hone my craft and understand how to do this properly, then when, as your account size increases, then I became a market promoter. Not a market operator. There's a big difference between a market promoter and a market operator. I don't operate markets. I promote markets. I identify companies that I like. I accumulate it and I promote it. Not to sell, but eventually to, for everybody to be able to get out at the same fair value prices. So there's a difference between a market promoter and a market operator, as I will identify each and every one later on. Then as you become successful in all those op market operations, then you start looking for values, right? Looking for the next one. And one of them that got me into trouble is a company called A. Soriano. I was exposed to Soriano. That time, the, mark, the net asset value was about eight to nine billion. We own ICTSI, we own Asian Bank, we own the enterprise uh, properties, we own Aboitis Transport, we own so many things, Amampulo, El Nido. So I started accumulating the stock. It was two and a half billion market cap. As I accumulate and accumulate one board seat, the price was still the same. And then accumulate again and accumulated. Two board seat. Those are the challenges when you identify companies and you feel that there's value, but since it was a holding company, we couldn't do anything. Then the next one, of course, is that that experience of mine, and of course there is a God, I always say there is a God, 1997, before the crisis or during the crisis, I was able to get out of that huge position. But without that experience, without that experience, there is no call financial today. There is no call financial. Because with that experience, what happened to us is that when we had two board seat, the company decided to issue one billion shares of stock to dilute us. So those are the challenges that we have. So the whole journey is all about being an investor, Learn how to speculate properly so you will have money to be able to do long-term investment. So I am indirectly, today, we have identified that I am also a value person. But I'm also a momentum investor. Meaning it's a value, momentum investor. I make money using my skill and the profit that I have, I identify a company that has value. All right? So this is the whole journey. The last 46 years, I will now break it down so that you can see it. Oh, 
don't get any. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. These are the three, when I was doing my presentation, then I tried to recall what I've done for the last 46 years. And I found out that these are the three major strategies which made a lot of money for me. This, but without my momentum and position trading strategy, I would not have accumulated enough resources, enough money to do all these things. All right, so I have to clear that up first. So the number one is capitulation. Number two, informed speculation. And number three, value investing. This is in 1987. I was with Juan's dad. And we saw the market. Before the market collapsed, we were seeing it already. We were in Mary Lynch. And there we are. I remember I was talking to a person and I said, I think this market is breaking down. I don't know if you can see it. Before the breakdown, that white candle, we were there. It's 200-day moving average, breaking down, major support. And I remember I was talking to, us, to one of the senior guys there who was uh, very seasoned. And he was buying at support. And I said, isn't that going to break down? He said, yeah, I think it's going to break down, but I think maybe it might hold for a while. I'll try to buy it. And then by the end of the day, if I'm wrong, it breaks down, I'm getting out. What do you think? Did you think he got out? Do you think? He didn't get out. Two days, the market went down 20, 25%. Two days. It wiped out everybody. In Mary Lynch, I remember that. And what happened was that that customer sued Mary Lynch. Because at the bottom, guess what Mary Lynch did? Liquidate him at the bottom. Liquidate him at the bottom. Because he was using a futures contract. And I was buying futures contract. In fact, I was with one his dad and another chairman trying to pick bottoms. My God, picking bottoms. I never knew how difficult it is to pick bottoms. I remember that. You know, we were so lucky. We were so lucky. When we bought the third day, gap down, we bought it. And it started going down. And then the market, the Fed intervened. The market was close. So that, the, so that the futures, the cash market can catch up with the futures. And guess, lo and behold, one hour later, all the market just went up to the moon. So we got out. So that was pure luck. Because I was using the wrong instrument. I was using a futures contract. But if I was buying equities, then it would have been different. But at that time, in 1987, I don't have the cash. I don't have the cash. So that's why we were trading commodities, just to be able to accumulate some cash, some money for us. This is what we call the credit crisis driven crash. Please, the, note is, the red note is very important. There are three major crises that you should always be aware of. One is Credit crisis, second is policy driven, and the third is political crisis. Remember that. Those are the three major crises that you want to be there. You want to be there. And this is what I'm going to show you. The second one, in 1989, Hong Kong, Tiananmen Square, Beijing, ran over. There was blood in the street. Hong Kong was just collapsing, 10, 20 cents to a dollar. 10, 20 cents or so. I was with the same chairman. We're always, when there's a crisis, we're always there trying to buy during those crises. Can you, so we also started moving in. By that time, we have a little more cash. So we were just buying equities itself. I remember I was calling my broker in Hong Kong, and he said, Mr. Lee, what are you doing? Everybody's getting out. I said, Jeremy, there is blood in the street. There is blood in the street. And you want to be there also. You need to be there. So we also got out. The sad part is, of course, I always get out too soon. When the bounce, I'm out. Because you can make a lot of money during the bounce. The thing is, of course, after that, everything just go sideways, go, go up. Right? But those are hindsight. I can't see those. But the most important is during those crises, you are there. You need to be there. You need to be there. 
The third one, just to let you see that that is a political driven crash. Driven crash. All right? Okay? So the next one, this is in 1998. I remembered that there was an Asian financial crisis and the market was going down to the going down very, very fast. And I knew we we're almost there. And guess who do I call? I always call April. And I ask April, what is the, the best that had a huge disparity? And he computed, she computed, she said, Sir, Petron. So I remember when we were buying it, Ayala land was eight pesos. Clearly, eight pesos. Petron, when we were buying it, that was two pesos. I also remember Juanes came to, to me and said, Boss, what are you doing? Why are you buying a falling knife? I remember, if you remember that, one is, he came to see, huh? He came to see me and said, boss, why are you buying this? It's a falling knife. I said, yes, I know it's a falling knife, but the disparity is just so huge. I cleared with April. I know the numbers. And I, I said, let them finish me. One week later, wala akong pera. Naubos ang pera ko. But Juanes was correct. Juanes was correct because Ayala land went to four pesos. Went another 50% down. Petron, wala na. Because I was there. I bought every shares available. Every shares available. That was one of my biggest moves. And do you see that volume when I sold it at 380? Because I asked April, what is the intrinsic value? He said, she said, 380. So at 380, nakapost na ako. We sold 150 million shares that day. 150. That you can see the volume. That's us. The sad part is one week later it was 480. Two weeks later it was six pesos. My God. But those are the beautiful things that I remember. Of course, there are a lot of sad things that we've done with that. But those are the most important time wherein you're there. You need to be there. And it was a credit crisis with the whole Asia Pacific started in Thailand. The contagion that came in in the Philippines at the time was the same. But mind you, Petron went down really to one peso after this. In 2001, 2000, you can see Petron went down to one peso. So, Juanes is correct. We just got out because we know what is the disparity. We know when it's time to get out. I never knew that 480. You know what happened there? There were huge short. Huge short. There was a global hedge fund shorting the, the whole Asia, Southeast Asia market. So I was just lucky. Because they have to cover their shorts. That's the reason I went to six pesos. All right? So these are the things. These are the challenges that we have. The next one. Same period. Financial crisis. This is in Hong Kong. This is in Hong Kong. It's called mean reversion also, capitulation. Now, don't, we, don't, we, are, we were in Hong Kong since 2002, so we have a chance to be able to see the Hong Kong stocks. COL was called financial. Hong Kong was born in 2002. So during the capitulation there, we can see them also. So how, why did we choose Sinoland? I mean, there were so many stocks to choose. Why did we choose Sinoland? And I shared this, I think, one last month in a trader conference. It's because we read the disclosures also. And we can see the insiders aggressively buying back their shares. So please, if you don't know how to read the PSE Edge, you need to learn how to do it properly. And learn how to dissect it properly. And compare it with price. Because there are a lot of buybacks today that the price are on top and not at the bottom. So you need to be very careful because some of them, the insiders buys it at the bottom and now ask the corporate to buy it at now major resistance, major, major prices. So you need to be careful. Whenever you're reading those disclosures, you need to know the difference. You know the difference. Who is buying? If the insiders are buying, 
at what level are they buying? Are they buying here on top or are they buying at the bottom? You need to be able to see it. Very carefully, you need to be able to identify. Not just understanding, oh, there's a buyback, you want to buy it. It's the same. When we were seeing the buyback in, in Hong Kong for Sinoland, in fact, I remember, I think, where's Lawrence? Lawrence was, I remember our trader was following me doing this mean reversion capitulation and they were cutting it down. They were cutting the, the breakout. It didn't happen. They were trying to sell it. And then I told Lawrence, all the buyers that are selling, cutting losses, give it to me now. At market major bottom, no more cut loss. No more cut loss. So sure enough, went from six to eight within a couple of days. Then I sold also. Then by March, did a double bottom. I bought it back at six. And I sold it at 8 again. But of course, after that, I saw it went to the moon also, right? I don't really know. I don't really know. The next one is after my stint in Sinoland. Twice. Let me, share the, let me share you the reason. This is... This is... My favorite URC. At six pesos, when it was capitulating, I also called up April Tan, our head of research. April, ano pinakamaganda? Boss, URC tayo. Buybacks from 14 pesos all the way down. Dito tayo sa URC. Then I, in fact, whenever I put it all in, I will all call my Major shareholders for a meeting. Oh, ito, all in na tayo dito, ha? all in na, all in na. At six pesos, I could get a, get a confirmation from one of my major shareholders. He couldn't say yes to me. In fact, I asked him, Pare, ano mo problema mo? Larga na. Ubusin na natin ito, pera natin. Sabi na, hindi ko kaya. Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, naipit ako eh. He bought, not, not, not New York City, but he bought a basket of stock and held it all the way down. Hold it all the way down. And we were telling them to get out. He didn't get out also because he would believe in a long-term story, which eventually went up. The problem is during those times, and I asked him, I said, how many times have I asked you to buy stocks? Never. Why? Because it's expensive. The day that it's cheap, dito na tayo. Hindi na magawa. Hindi na talaga magawa. That's why it's very difficult. You think you can do it. It's really difficult. Because if you have to write it down 50, 60, 70% because it was a crisis, a financial crisis, the world was in trouble. Lehman went down. Merrill Lynch went down. Goldman has to be refinanced. During the 2008, 2009, it was one of the most difficult period. We're in. Can you put all your money in? So at six pesos, ayaw niya. So ang ginawa ko, nag-sideline muna ako sa Hong Kong. Kaya may sideline sa Hong Kong. That's why the entry, how do you put this back? The entry, I use Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong may buy back. I can see the buybacks going in. So I went to Hong Kong. Two trips in Hong Kong before I went to URC. So I bought it at 8 pesos that day. I remember that. I think, Lawrence, were you the one who executed for me? I bought so many shares. By the end of the day, I was down 20%. Scared the shit out of me also, right? But then, syempre, wala na. Because I had made money in Hong Kong, I put it in, all in, in also URC. The biggest problem with URC is I sold it at 12 pesos. It went to 200 So that's the biggest joke. My children will laugh at me all the time. Boss, ha, ha, ha. Dad, you know, what did, what did you do? My God. But you have to remember, we need the cash to build COL. We need that. We need that. All right. This one is very recent. When we saw Abe coming in, and there was, a, there was a strong yen 
that was making a major down move to one of the biggest bank. And I remember that day. I remember that day. I said, when I see huge capitulation, huge disparity, five, six times price to book, uh, PE, six, seven percent cash dividends. So because, okay, all in, all in, all in, that's the same thing. That day, I also, by the end of the day, I was down 10 million pesos also. But the next day, gap up. You make eight to 10 percent in a very huge move in just a few days. Now, the reason why, I need to show you this, the reason why I showed this, what we did, we always sell it on the major first rally, we sell it already, is because sometimes stocks can go just sideways for the next eight to nine months before it starts moving up. Today, if you look at the same company, it's back to the same price. So everything is hindsight. Everything is hindsight. Everything is hindsight. So pol the policy-driven crash you have to know if it's a policy drone, that means it's just going to bounce only for a few weeks. Then eventually, it just goes sideways. Go sideways. All right? So let me share with you. This is what we call the capitulation play. The last, of course, was last year, 2018, when Trump was so noisy, tweeting every day. There was a Chinese trade war. And the whole market was going to the dogs. I shared this in a workshop early this year. Same thing. It's called a policy-driven crash. When it's a policy-driven crash, that means the maximum is about 20, 25 percent. When you see huge capitulation, you want to be there also. All right? Okay? So this is the first chapter on capitulation. The next one, please. Try to understand the chart at the top. It's called the life cycle of a junior mind. You have to identify, learn. Most of the reason why most people lose money trading, especially, for example, in the third telco last year, was because of that. They didn't understand how this kind of speculation works. Right? This is what we call informed speculation. You need to know where you are, where you're buying it, and you need to know where you want to be selling it. All right, so please, we showed this already in our market outlook early this year. Go over it again and try to understand. I did a small stint in, uh, in Canada. I brought my family in 1989 because I did a market speculation in one of the biggest copper mining company in the Philippines. And I did the same, accumulate and accumulate. And what happened was I really got sick because the price didn't even go up. Because the biggest copper mine during the time was not operating. I didn't know that. I thought it was just pure charting. I didn't know that you need to understand fundamentals. Right? So I was buying, accumulating this stock, I think in 1987, 1988. And I was really excited about because copper, I saw copper price going from 65 to 85 cents. Gold was going up also. Silver, I think I remember that day. Seven to eleven dollars, and I said, "My God, this is so good." The, nobody was buying this copper stock, the biggest copper mining company. I accumulated and accumulated and accumulated, twelve, thirteen pesos. Copper price went up, and I tried to push the price up. I push the price, like a market operator. <laughs> Though I got somebody to push it for me, and <laughs> And what happened is that I remember that clearly. It went up to 15, 50, 16 pesos for the end of the day. I went to Mary, I think I went to Mary Lynch yesterday, I remember that. And uh, I saw the price of gold at 480, copper price at 85 cents, silver at 11. I was so excited. So I go, oh, okay, Nito. the next day it's going to go to 18, 20 pesos. Guess what? Eight o'clock in the morning, I was in the Manila Stock Exchange already. Looking at the price, hey, something is wrong with the price, the quoted price. Gold was 440. Silver was seven dollars. Copper went down to 65 cents. So ah, this is wrong. So I check again and again and again. Tama pala siya. It was the biggest meltdown in commodities that particular day. Can you imagine? Within the day, huge meltdown. So I was walking. And the floor, I don't, I don't think, I think Steelwood was still there. I was walking on the floor, 
And my, my people were laughing at me. Madudulas na, si, madudulas na si boss dito. Kasi the price from 15 went back to 12.13. So eventually I got out. But I was not feeling well. The stress. Can you imagine that? So I went to see my doctor. My doctor said, X-ray ka. So I went X-ray ako. They couldn't find my gallbladder. Hindi niya makita. Oh my God. Tapos, sige, CT scan ka na lang. Nagpa-CT scan ako. 7 o'clock early in the morning. I was drinking all this white thing that I don't even understand what it is. Then they put me in a chamber. And I said to myself, what's the use of all the money in the world? Kung mamamatay ka lang. Alam mo yung sakit ko? Hyperacidity. <laughs> stress lang, stress. Straight in doing it. You know the reason why? After six months, do you know what's the price of Atlas? It was the biggest takeover. I was correct. I was just six months way ahead. 65 pesos. The biggest takeover. So those are the experiences that we have to go through. So when I went my state from 89 to 95, I was spending most of my time in the library understanding what is this speculation all about. And here I have to remember in Toronto, Canada, in fact, I met the ambassador, ex-ambassador last night, and he was with B2 Gold, and he was showing me all what he's doing, and I was smiling, and I said, I've done this before, right? So when I came back, I, I, I read a book in the library. I was so depressed every day. I have to bring my children to school. I have three children, and all three have different schools. So I'm going school bus driver every morning. Then I'm so depressed, I go to the mall, I go to the library, and I started reading. And lo and behold, I found a book. It's called The Gold Book by Financial Times. And there I saw the life cycle of a junior mine. When I came back, I told my chairman, who is a mining, mining uh, enthusiast, and I said, Chairman, I know how to do this already. So we look at his production, and it was the beginning of the capacity cycle, meaning the beginning of expanding from 500 tons to 5,000 tons, it's 10 times in production. I asked him what is his cash cost, and he said it's about $140. At that time, gold was $380. And I said, this is good. And I started accumulating. Accumulating, accumulating. Then I started promoting it. I started promoting. So we got out at $0.30, cents, the balance $0.50. Cents. Because at that time, the reason why we were able to sell at $0.50 cents is because Manila Mining made the most money that year, and my chairman became the... Mining man of the year. So everybody was buying Manila mining. And who's selling? We're selling. And that's how when you're buying a telco, when you see the guy face on, on in front of the major news daily, you better sell, not buy stocks. Because that's a buy on rumor, sell on news. That's the reason why the buying of ISM taking over prices are at the top. All these telcos, if it's coming out of news, it's always at the top. That's why you need to learn how to do it properly. Oh my God, negative one now, negative five now. Give me a few more minutes. The next one is what? The, it's our old informed speculation. Huh? You know, it was a good thing I sent my son to, to Boston. And lo and behold, I never knew that he was watching Spider Man 1. When it came out, I remember that the market cap at that time was four five hundred million dollars, and there was a huge restructuring for Marvel Entertainment. Then he said, "Dad, sigurado na ito, nagclick yung Spider-Man one." And of course, Marvel has what so many, including the Avengers Spider-Man. Man. Avengers is uh, the end game. So we saw the opportunity. No earnings yet. We started accumulating. What about six dollars? Then eventually we sold the 18. By the time it went up new high, who bought it? Disney. Disney bought it. So the Wolverine came out, the Hawk came out, all these Iron Man came out, it became a hit. Disney took it. But while I was there anymore, I was out at $18. Okay, so these are what we call informed speculation. You need to be able to see these things. So the same, 
This is not a company that I love. This is Turtles Hill. This is Ivanhoe. This is based in Mongolia. The third largest copper and gold mining company. So the same thing. I was exposed to this company in 2004. I started following it. If you go to YouTube, you can see it. So I had a chance to be able to buy it. And then, of course, at the top of the market, guess who bought it? Rio Tinto bought it. Rio Tinto bought it. But of course, I was not there anymore. I'm always too early. All right? But the problem is with this company, till today, guess where is the surprise? It's still at 160. Making money, huge production. The mining chart did not work. It did not work. So if you don't know price, if you don't know how to look at price, it's the same as what happened to me in A. Soriano. It took 20 years before it went to 6 pesos. I'll share it with you later on. And that's really the scary part. You need to know also price. Not only stories, but when to get out if you're wrong. Okay? So these are the stories that we have. Always exciting. And the last, of course, is the same chairman, but still well knows him very well. When the disclosure came out that there was gold fields buying 40% of one of the subsidiary far southeast, which is the biggest mining company, biggest reserve, high good quality reserve. When I saw that, there was a huge spike up. Look at it, we checked the story. Then the chairman was buying rights, buying issued rights to be able to accumulate, to buy more shares. We also participated. I remember my partner who was always with me in, that, in all these ventures told me, Baka na loko ka ng chairman. And I said, you need to give me some credit. Because we look at all the disclosures, because gold fields is listed in the, in, the, in the U.S. So what we did was we, as one of our guys, to look into that company and try to understand if there is really that reserve that gold fields was buying. And sure enough, it was there. Gold fields spent another $100 million the last 10 years. Today, the price of Lepanto is still less than 10 cents cent and was. Very similar to what happened to Tortoise Hill. So always be aware of these things. Be aware of these things. We do not encourage you to do this, but that's why I have to put a disclaimer at very early, uh, from my very start of my talk, is that these are always the problem. If you don't know what you're doing, you won't be able to make it. Okay. Why did I say I'm a value investor? From 1973 to 83, I was learning how to time markets. At the same time, learning how, what's the stock market is all about. I tried to get the chart of uh, the companies that I, we did very well. Because we started buying after the, after the Ninoy was shot. Interest went up to 30 40%. And we did very well. And after that, we were using some of the interest income to start accumulating stocks. Lord and behold, I didn't know that there was going to be an EDSA revolution. So the stock, most of our stock, from three centavos went up to one peso. So I sold, and I bought a bro local brokerage house. And that's why CD Securities was born. Eventually, CL Financial, Call Financial was born. So these were all out of identifying, identifying huge disparity Huge disparity in terms of price is probably a selling at 10, 20 cents to a dollar. We started accumulating. So I am also a value guy. I'm also a value guy. This is A. Soriano, the one that I was showing you a while ago. I didn't make money here. I didn't make money. But I was just lucky I was able to get out because this was also during the ninth Asian financial crisis. 
I remember I was selling. I was just very lucky. One of, the, one of our institutional brokers was able to get me out of that stock. I sold everything at 280 a two-board seat. In 2001, get what was the price of Anscor? It was 25 cents. 90% was lost. But of course, today, 20 years later, the value was realized. It's now about six something. Okay, so very careful. When you're doing all these things, putting a lot of money in, all in, you have to be very careful. Okay, so let me just share it with you. The lessons I've learned. You need to know the difference between investing and trading. Right? Look at the numbers very carefully. If you're buying a Philippine growth story, the Philippines, the next 10, 20 years, will be probably be growing compounded rate of return of 10 to 12%. No need to think otherwise. Set aside 10, 20% of whatever you have and start accumulating the index stocks or individual issues. Look at the numbers. 90, 95% win rate. Buying a good company with good values. When you're trading, yes, you can increase your return. The only problem is you need time. You need to have attend these kind of seminars, right? Hit ratio, 50, 60 percent. And what is your trading style? My trading style is simple. I'm a momentum trader, right? I focus on momentum. I fo focus on position trading. I only trade the left side, which is trend trading. This is what we call the easy money. Reversals that has problems. We don't teach reversals. We don't teach capitulation. We only do it if the whole market is collapsing. Only in the Philippines. I cannot do that in the States. If a stock is collapsing in the US and I buy it, I'm dead. It just goes sideways and then go down new lows. It's part of CHP. Part of CHP. Down to 80%. Can you imagine that? Baka totoo na. Pero palaging totoo na. The second, which is very important, is you have to treat trading. By the way, this is trading. This is not investing. Huh? Trading is a business. Follow the rules. Follow the setup rules. You have to know what are the rules. When to get in. When to get out. How much are you willing to lose? Very important. It's no jackpot mentality. Everybody likes to make jackpot. So if you understand all the different rules, there are five strategies which you have to know. We need to show you all this so that you understand what was happening. Me, if I'm trading, I'm just doing trend trading and momentum trading. Maybe a little bit swing, but after that, I don't touch it anymore. Then I wait for capitulation to come in so I can deploy. But when the market breaks down, I'm always out of the market because I'm always hoping that there will be a crisis. I love crisis. Because that's the only time. In fact, my children will always say, Dad, wala ka naman ginagawa raw raw, nagkakape ka lang eh. Nakihintay ka lang ng crisis. That's true. But I need to keep myself busy. I need to trade. Every day I trade. I trade more than anybody. I'm very actively in the market. Very active in the market. I trade the U.S. market. 30 minutes, one hour, tapos na ako. Win or lose, I scalp the market. This was presented, this is, I presented this about a month ago. I did a, I did a, uh, a workshop, and I showed this. You have to know the companies you're buying. You have to know at what cycle they're in. Are you a startup, a young growth, a high growth, Mature growth, mature stable, declining. When you are trading mature growth and mature stable, is it a buy high, sell high, or a buy low, sell high? Answer me. It should be a buy low, sell high, right? If you're buying mature growth, mature stable, you don't want to be buying buy high, sell higher. Because look at Juan's uh, presentation a while ago. Every time it breaks out, it just hit the resistance. Because people will sell at resistance. And that's how it is. You want to buy cheap, sell it higher. Now, when you're in a startup, mature growth, young growth, high growth, you can deploy the buy high, sell higher. The market cap is smaller. The growth is 20, 30% more. 
then you have to know what are the strategies that you need to use. If you buy Meralco, break out, oh, do you think it will go up? It will go up maybe for a day or two because all of us are buying the breakout. Right? That's why when the chartist tells you, buy the breakout, chart, chart lang, you need to qualify what kind of chart you're using. Because if you don't qualify that, then you're just, the expectation will just be very different. Very different. This I presented in the Market Outlook. It's all about 10-year treasury in the U.S. So that you understand what is risk on, what is risk off. If you follow the last five years based on yields, the yields are going down, the market goes up, yields goes up, the market goes down. It's just a risk on, risk off. You have to follow the Fed, what the Fed is doing. If the Fed is increasing interest rates, what will happen? If the 10-year treasury is going up, automatically our emerging market will go down. It's just so, I shouldn't say that word again, so simple. But that's what it is. Know where the money flow is. Know where the liquidity is coming. Interest rates goes up automatically. Or the research people would increase the risk-free premium, the risk-free rate. Automatically. Then the valuations will go down. The value will go down. You need to understand that. You need to know to have, you know, a lot of people once asked that question. I think in the last summit also, they talk about what? Can we make trading a living? What is our answer? Yes or no? No way. Especially if you're just focused on the Philippines. There's no way you can make it. I tried to do that also when I was in Canada. I was trading for a living. And I didn't survive. Six months, all alone by myself, down in the basement, trading global markets, trading the commodities. I didn't lose money, but I never made money. Because alone, in the basement, with your washer and dryer bothering you every second, no way you can survive. Especially you're putting food on the table. No way. So you need to focus on your work. You need to focus on or get somebody to sponsor you to become a trader. Right? And learn as much as you can. Once you learn it, then you don't have to worry about where you're getting your food, your cash flow. So, first is you need to understand how to do it properly. Do it or no properly. Of course, this afternoon, I think they'll talk about the journal, right? How do you keep the journal so that you can reflect and review what you're doing, whether you're right or wrong? Because always the challenge of everybody is that sometimes you think you're doing the right thing, but you can't see it because... We have our ego and our blind spot. This is from Ray Dalio. Please look at it. The principles of Ray Dalio. It's an animated 30 minutes. It talks about our ego. How do you control it? And also understanding that we're all born and wired differently. We cannot see everything. We have our own blind spot. That's why you need to be in a trading community. So that we can help. But please look for the right community. Or just look for your partner, your wife or your husband. Right? When you do, when you have to report to your husband or to your wife. Honey, tama ba itong ginagawa ko? Hoy, bobo ka, talo ka. Kailangan ganun lang yan, di ba? Somebody, you should be accountable to somebody. Because if you're not accountable, you will think that you're doing the right thing. But indirectly, you're just losing money. It's just a waste of time. Focus on your work. Focus on your business. Alright, so let me end. Uh, let me show you some of the books that I did very well. Inspiring me. One Up on Wall Street was given to me in 1988-99. It's looking for the 10 bagger, looking for the high growth. Then I stumbled into finding the next Starbucks. How do you build this kind of business? The four Ps, people, product, potential, predictability. Then, of course, the classic technical analysis of stock trends. Nowadays, you don't probably need to read it. It's so difficult, the classic charting. It's now YouTube available. So, video YouTubes. Please go over it. Value investing, value momentum investing. This is what Adam Ku was saying. You learn how to trade, make money, and put it in a company. Values. Second is the laws of valuation, which I showed you that very good. Third is the article from Drunken Miller. 
It's all about liquidity. All right, let me close. My daughter asked me the other day, Dad, what is your quote? I said, luck goes to the prepared mind. Dad, hindi sa iyo yan. So ito hindi rin sa akin, siyang gumawa. We must always have an open mind. To be open to new ideas, to have a glass half empty, to be humble enough to say that there are things that we don't know that other people do. All right, thank you very much. All right, another round of applause.